Hello everybody, today I will be going over all the features offered in the 1.0 version of the Battalion Wars 3D Editor. Uh, a lot of things will be maybe a little bit janky, this is a 1.0 version, but you know what? This is a lot better than what we had before, and I think a lot of you will be very pleased with the work Yoshi has put in to this. Starting off with a weakness of the 3D Editor, we have the select. It will select all objects in 2D mode. That is because we're doing an XY check over everything to check its position. In the 3D mode, which is another feature that is uh, for the editor, if I try to select everything, say from out here, clearly not the same number of objects there. Uh, just keep that in mind. Whenever you're in 3D mode, you want to do small selections of objects, and remember it will also select under the map 3D mode, and you won't always see everything, so keep that in mind. We can move things up and down in 3D mode. Uh, keep in mind that uh, some objects are actually below the map, but being locked to the top of terrain, just like in-game. Some objects do not get locked in-game. They are placed completely manually by the devs. We have a undo feature. Highly requested. I'm sure everybody will be happy with that. We can rotate things. That's a whole bunch of fun. And we have the XML tr or tree over here where we can look at every single object inside the XML, including the preload. So this means we can also edit the damage values of things in the general balance of the world. We have a search function inside the object, so if I took a, I just want to search for player, as you can see it found player. If you have like an extensive XML object, that would be very helpful. We also have a search feature here. If you click help, you can find out exactly how it works, but uh, it is very powerful and you can find specific things on specific objects. So if I want to search for uh, the seed used to randomly place objects on uh, scenery clusters. Alright, let's go to seed here. Let's go to find objects. Pull that up. Self dot seed. And I can hit tab to autocomplete. Let's do is not zero. So let's look for any objects where the seed isn't zero. Alright, doesn't look like we have any. So let's do zero. We have 532 results. So if I click on one of them, double click, it'll take me right to it. If it doesn't have an object position, it will also open the XML. So that's just another useful thing. That's a very useful feature and I believe a lot of you will be using it. So now, getting on to the really, really cool. If I open up Dolphin here, and I go really fast through the early game here, and I open up this level in-game, and I wait till this loading icon is gone. I can enable live view in the editor, and it will latch on to a dolphin instance, the first one it finds. So if you have multiple dolphin instances open, it won't latch onto two. It won't glitch it out or anything. But if I put this to the side, close. You can see the cutscene camera moving following the waypoints. It updates 10 times a second, so it doesn't look as smooth as in-game. That's also another performance reason thing. And we also, I don't, the keen-eyed among you might have noticed that we have a second mode live edit mode. Now that is a little bit different than live view mode. It does not update the in-game positions of units. So what it does is it takes the XML positions of units and applies them in-game. So if I want to move this vehicle up, see that, that object's glitching out. Vehicles are a little bit glitchy sometimes, but let's do this with troop. As you can see, it's updating 10 times a second, so this troop is kind of floating in the air, just having its position set there. So this is editing the actual XML, and not 
not showing you in game. This is more useful, more useful for specific objects. Um, some objects will not update. So if I go to, if I stop doing that, he'll fall to the ground. If I go to this editor over here, and let's see, where is my camera looking? Oh, go to live view mode. So as you can see, camera is looking behind. Some objects do not update. So this object is actually being moved, but the 3D model is not. So just keep that in mind when moving destroyable objects. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot of them in the editor. So another thing, we can apply live positions to selected. So say we want this all to be proper in the editor. So we're going to need to hide a bunch of things here. We're going to go to destroyable objects and we're going to apply live positions to selected. So we've applied the correct positions to all of these that are in memory right now to the XML. So if I go back to regular XML view, as you can see, they're all in the right place while they only have the poles over here. That's just another useful feature there. So if I go back to live view, show all. I can toss myself around as a cool feature here. Turn myself around. Take myself way out of bounds for no reason at all. Super high in the air. Very useful for just kind of seeing how your stuff reacts in game. I can just drop you down. I think I'm finished with that level. Let's show something else here. Let's go to Battalion Wars 1. Or Actually, before I do that, I also want to show off something else. So if I go to Filter View and I hide all, let's go to Mission Boundary. Kind of important. Might not be what I want here. You know what it is? I just need to go to Top Down, top down View. Like I said, there are some useful things with Top Down View that aren't with it. If I want to they change the mission boundary, something that you couldn't ordinarily do before. Let's save that. Might take a second. Let's open it back up. Let's check the live view. Because why not? I just want to see this coolness. It thinks we're all out of bounds still. Because it it applies the zone positions to the PF2 file. And it's pretty cool. Right now it's looking for a place to put me in the game, so... <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize it, uh, it moved the troop like that. Might have broken it. I don't know. As you can see, the pathfinding kind of intersects. But uh, we do not edit the pathfinding, so it will not curve to what you want it to be as well. And let's resave it. Everything back to default. Now, let's load a Battalion Wars 1 level. Here. 
Let's go to plan of attack. Good one. There are some things that you can do in here that you cannot do. Oh well. Let's just go to the first one on patrol. Don't ha seem to have all the levels unlocked. So, the levels will take a while to load at first. Just keep that in mind. After the, the after the first load, they won't take nearly as long to load. If I go to live view, there are a few things we can do in here that we can't do in Battalion Wars 2 because of the PF2 file. So if I want to hide a bunch of things here, real quick. Let's move this. Since this is all calculated in XML, the game still thinks that uh, that's the proper position of that zone. So you can actually move the zones around in Battalion Wars 1 in Live Edit just to test things out. Remember, Live Edit Mode edits the XML and in-game. So this is one of the use cases that you would use it for because it would actually edit the XML so if you're making micro adjustments or something like that, that's what you'd want to use it for. And I think that uh, just about covers almost everything. Let me go through it again. Go all. Table. Pull this out. We can clone objects. So if you want to add a bunch of objects, you can do that. We can remove objects, we can edit objects, so if you select an object... And open up the editor, I forgot to talk about this. If you right-click on things, you can find the ID and map, if it's a soldier or a troop that it's referencing. Or you can just edit XML for ID and you can kind of go down the train. You know, collide type. But let's grab a vehicle real quick and see if I can find a passenger just to demonstrate it. Well, this one doesn't have a passenger. Any vehicle. Hopefully this one has a passenger. Over here? Nope, no passenger. Well... Let me boot up a level from Battalion Wars 2. Let's do a good level. Let's do SP-01, the first level in the game. So this may take a small amount of small more amount more time to load, I believe I've said this before. It's caching all the all the textures. All right, we loaded it up. Let's click on here. Edit object. We have this passenger. We can go find it in the map. So look, here it is. Locks in on it. We will also do this in 3D mode. So if I go here, that is true. Not the Air vehicle, so find ID and map. All right, and another cool feature that uh, we have: select a bunch of objects here. Edit object XML. It'll open every single object XML of the objects I just selected. So let's ignore that because I don't want to X out 83 windows. But uh, yeah, that about covers it. All the useful 
useful features of this 2D editor. Got the waypoint lines, you got see the icons of things, whether the zone's 2D or 3D, whether they care about up and down. And that's just about it. Have fun making whatever you want to make.